Hey, welcome to Fix It for Josh's Sake. Today I want to take you on a journey of uh, repairing, rebuilding the carburetor that's in this uh, snowmobile behind me. This is a 1972 uh, Articat Lynx. It's got the 292 Kawasaki motor in it. And uh, in my last video, we took this carburetor out. Now it's all grimy and gunky and we're gonna go ahead and take it all apart. I'm gonna run to the parts store get a rebuild kit for it and uh, put it back in this sled and see how it runs. Thanks for coming along for the for the journey as we fix it for Josh's sake. All right, let's get started. Uh, when I'm taking out a carburetor out of a snowmobile that I'm rebuilding, I don't waste my time like trying to pull these lines off because they're old and crusty. And so I just snip them off so that we can get, uh, get out of the sled and get working on it in a better setting like here on the table. Now that we're to the point where we need to take that those lines off, I will take a little a knife here and I'll give them a little cut and not too deep, but enough to crack the plastic or the rubber and get this to come open. If you go too deep, you start to cut into the, the fuel inlet. You don't want to do that. So uh, go ahead and give each one of these a little scar and then you can pull them off and start cleaning them up. Now that I got those cut and they come off easy, we get rid of those lines, I will grab myself some of this uh, Zep Fast 505 degreaser and cleaner. And I spray this up real good because I wanna clean the outside before I start cracking open the inside. In my opinion, if dirt can get somewhere, it's going to. So I'm gonna get rid of all this outside dirt, grease and grime, before I even start peeling any of these uh, layers off. I like these little disposable brushes that you get at Home Depot or Menards or Harbor Freight. Uh, they work really nice to uh, just non-invasively scrub around on the aluminum parts of this carburetor. I probably have about 20 of these laying around in different states. Some are like brand new and some are so rolled over they look like a curly beard. But they come in pretty handy for breaking off the crust and crud on a lot of different things but yet they don't get so aggressive like a stainless brush does that you end up with a weird shiny scarring on your aluminum. All right, we're back. I uh, sprayed the uh, Zep degreaser on it, scrubbed it down really good, ran it under hot water to get uh, any of the grease or grime washed away, and then blew it off with my air compressor. The key thing is to not leave the Zep on too long because, let me tell you, it works really well, but it also will, uh, if it le is left sitting on the aluminum, it will start to eat it away. We don't want to do that with a nice tin carb that's kind of rare and heck of a gold piece of gold when you do find it. So get those washed off and uh, we're going to start cracking this open now. The first thing you should do is get this velocity stack off of here. And that is a 7 16 inch wrench required to do that and once you got the uh, bolts taken out for the velocity stack to come off the throttle cable holding plate will come off too all right now i'm going to count the turns on this uh, these two screws i want to see how many turns out they are so i'll zero them and count as i go to see where they're at gives me a reference of where the person who was running the sled last had it set uh, just to know kind of where we started and I might still go back to factory specs but it's nice to have a reference of where the carb was set when the motor was running before so that's a half a turn that's a whole oh not even a whole turn so this was about a turn and uh, no, three quarters of a turn about Now we'll take this pilot jet out of here and pull it up, kind of look at it, see how it feels. Pretty much right over here. Uh, I also like to get those out of there before we get too far along. Get yourself a little screwdriver, poke down in there, and you'll get both the brass washer and the rubber gasket. Notice how it's shaped, kind of tapered in 
to fit into the, the taper of the carburetor. All right, let's see where this one was at. So we got half a turn, whole turn. Uh, not quite a turn and a half, so, you know, do some fancy math there. Just shy of a turn and a half, and then we'll bring it out and see what this one looks like. All right. Not too bad. And then we got to go ahead and get this brass washer and the rubber gasket out, a rubber o-ring out as well. Okay, there it is. Next, we're going to take off the fuel inlet port right here at the bottom. So that comes up, and then there's going to be a screen under here. Ooh, that is disgusting. Yeah, you, you see a lot of sins when you start opening up these carburetors. That is pretty nasty. So this will come up. It's a gasket. Sometimes the gasket stays attached to the screen. In this situation, it's kind of delaminating into two pieces. But wow, that is nasty. All right. And we got some green gunk in here. Okay. And then the first layer. Uh, I always like to make sure you got the right size bit because we need all of these screws to come off really clean without having a gnarled up slots in the screws. I'm also going to say these were surprisingly loose, which makes me nervous because you should have good air seal on all the gasket layers. So keep that in mind when you're putting this carburetor back together. You always want to get, get these screws pretty snug. Another thing I want to mention is be really intentional about keeping track of the lock washers that are that are on these screws. And the reason is because I've actually found that they're difficult to find the exact same. And I'm kind of anal retentive in that I like everything to match. So I'm either replacing six washers or we just hold on to these, don't let them get away on us. And then we have uh everything we need for reassembly. Okay, we're ready to start cracking this open. Uh, first thing I want to point out is this is our inlet. Our velocity stack was right here. Here's our choke. And the way they set this up on this Tillotson HR carburetor is the flat little tabs here face towards the choke inlet area. So just keep that in mind. It's going to line up off this edge and all of them are going to face this way because sometimes when you're putting stuff to back together, it's kind of difficult to remember what goes where. So this is what it looks like before we start peeling the layers apart. And then we'll grab this and we'll pull it up and we will see some more grime and gunk. So that's our first layer up. Okay, when I'm pulling up these layers, I usually use a little disposable knife and peel them up like that. There's my first layer, came up, pretty gross. And then we come to the gasket. Gaskets can be a challenge. And we're trying to get as much gasket material up and off of the aluminum as possible so that uh, we don't have to sit here and scrub on these plates. Well, this pretty much sucks. I've got pieces of gasket material and I'm scraping this off and using my little knife here, but I just want to say that if you have to do this, uh, I'm spraying the, the Zep on it, the cleaner, and uh, as I'm scraping on this, I'm not digging my blade in to the best of my ability because I don't want to scratch the surface. I need the surface to be smooth and flat so that the gaskets properly seal on it. So after I uh, scrape on it a bunch with the razor blade, then I'll come at it with the brass brush again and get the rest of that gasket material off. Uh, you can kind of see it's doing pretty good here. We're getting almost to the home stretch of working it off without causing any permanent damage to the surface of the aluminum. Okay, got that cleaned off pretty good. Uh, I'm happy with that. Now we're going to go ahead and crack open the next layer and I'm guessing it's going to be as annoying 
as that first layer. But there is a bit of uh, some giveaway here. We can stick a screwdriver in there and start to pry these apart uh, and see what we got for grime and dirt on this next layer. She's pretty sticky. All right. It's coming apart. Hold on. Hold with me. Oof. Yep. Now we got it coming in two pieces. See that? Okay. Another gross, disgusting layer. I'm going to work on peeling this off before I move on. Just want to point out some of the stuff you find as you uh, take these carbs apart. This right here is supposed to be a flap that uh, regulates some of the air pressure coming in here. And that is completely deteriorated. You see that shot. So, uh, yeah, just be aware of what's going on and, and what you're working on and it'll help you understand why things weren't working right, why the machine got parked in the first place. And once I have that gasket material peeled off, I want to clean this up and make it look good. This side looks nice. I mean, I already cleaned that one up, so we're going to work on this one and get this one looking good, too. All right. With a bit of scrubbing and tenacity, uh, this is all cleaned off now. So it was sitting like this. I like to make sure I stack everything in the order that it was sitting. So this was like that. And I'll put it on my pile over here. Next, we're going to peel this thing up and get this off of there. It's not coming off too bad. I mean, I've been soaking it, though, in Zep this whole time, and it starts to get softer and softer as we move in to each layer. I suppose that stuff's penetrating in there and kind of breaking it loose. Well, that took some time, but uh, between my little razor blade here and my scrub brush, got that cleaned up pretty good, and we're going to... Uh, start peeling this one off. So this little square shoulder here works pretty good to pry on. You can pop that up. You can see what's inside of here. We can also see the, the diaphragm here. I'm going to try to pull this away from the aluminum and clean that up while I'm here at this stage. Some things are easier said than done, but I like to use this little knife as a pry bar, not so much as a slicing tool and try to break this gasket off there so that it's nice and clean for the next gasket to seal properly. But my goodness, this gasket layer uh, all the way through this carburetor, super sticky. All right, okay, I'm gonna clean that up and then we can move on to the inners of this carburetor. Well, that cleaned up pretty good. And I'm going to set that over here in my pile, and I'm going to set this diaphragm in my pile so I know everything stays right. And we can start cracking into this part, the real lung of this uh, particular carburetor. We've got our little actuator here. There's really no way to see it, but down in here, well, maybe you can see it. Down in here is a spring right under there. Right there is a spring, and that spring is uh, putting pressure back onto the needle and seat here. So we'll take this screw out here and be real careful we don't lose this pin, we don't lose the spring, we don't lose the arm, and we don't lose the needle that's in the seat there. We'll get everything cleaned up. As you're taking this apart, keep your thumb down on the middle of the uh, actuating arm. So this screw comes out of there, that's fine, but right now it's spring-loaded with pressure, and so catch it, catch that spring. Now you can see the spring is standing up there, all right? So you don't want to take that screw out and have everything just blow up on you. Well, the good news is this needle came out real easy. Uh, the last carb I rebuilt, it was a HD. That needle was stuck in there really good, so this one's moving well. Uh, we'll get that cleaned up in a little bit here. Uh, right now I'm going to take out the seat. All right, in order to get the seat out of this carburetor, grab yourself your 5 16 inch socket and stick it down in there. And then go ahead and pull that seat out. And 
It's in there pretty deep, actually, but it'll thread out just like this. And they don't give you much clearance between your socket and the side of the carburetor there. But once that's out, then we got to grab a little screwdriver or something here. I'm going to reach down and get this brass, uh, uh, like, bushing, bash, brass washer. It's a crush washer that'll seal under the seat. Man, that's in there really good. I'll have to get a different tool to get that one out of there. All right, now I'm going to take this uh, over to my air compressor. I'm going to blow air in all the little ports and holes. And just get everything cleaned out. And there's even the little bitty return port right there. I think super little. Oh, and it feels pretty gunked up. So, yeah, just make sure everything's flowing. If you have to use a piece of wire or something to poke into a little port like that, uh, or, uh, you know, I have a tool like this that's pretty sharp, but just make sure everything is flowing, because if it's not, gas is not going to get there. Everything's cleaned up. Air went through all the ports and holes real nicely. Uh, there, there are some Welch plugs here, and if you are not getting airflow through some of your uh, different inlets and outlets, you would have to drill those and then use a screwdriver, pop them out, and you'd find gunk inside of there. But if everything's flowing good, you usually don't have to pull your Welsh plugs out. To get this put back together, here's my new seat. I'm going to put that in and get ready to put a needle in there. Again, this is a, oh, what size is it? A 5 sixteenths inch, inch socket. And like I said, when I was taking out the seat, they don't give me any extra room for the socket, that's for sure. It's super snug on the edge. On the HD carb, I end up grinding off the edge of the socket to have room. There we go. That's in there nice. For this next bit, we'll put in the new needle. We'll sit down in there like that. And then... We've got our new actuator arm that goes like that. Okay. Now I'm uh, using a new spring, but it's the same color as the old one. We're going to do a pop-off test in a little bit here. Uh, that's my reasoning, though, is that if I use the same color as the old one, hopefully it will have the same pressure. Time will tell, but uh, be careful. This spring is tiny. Put that back in there. And then the seat and the... Spring and the actuator all go together like that. Whoop. Make sure you get it straight. Otherwise things pop loose. Just like that. And then we gotta get this screw in there. It just comes down over top of the pin. And once that's in place, we can see that it's actuating like it should. And the needle and seat are going to be able to move right, provided the diaphragm is hitting right there and moving that properly. Okay, now we can start putting the gasket pieces on. This one looks like this. What I'm watching here is this tab that comes out, and it follows the gas inlet port right there. So when we set it on and it, everything falls on the pins, that hole is lined up. And then we got the three pins all uh, catching that gasket just right then we've got our diaphragm looks like this that same tab is sticking out right there and this little tab is going to line up with that tab so those two will come together just like that on the pins everything sits good i mean it helps if the carburetor is sitting level but all right we're ready for the first aluminum plate here's our first plate and just make sure you get this port the impulse line facing uh, up or if the carburetor was flipped over I guess the top is down right now but make sure this is facing up for what the orientation we have right now uh, again the square tab is going towards the front of the carburetor here where the air would come in uh, that square tab is lining up here with the shoulder so we'll watch that and now we're going to put on the next layer for this next gasket layer 
uh, we're watching the shape right here which matches the shape here but also it works well this tab lines up with that shoulder on the aluminum plate so that goes there and then we've got this diaphragm plate this was the diaphragm that when I was taking apart that was just shredded and again we got the same kind of shape we've got this little prong that sticks out there we're gonna put them all on the three pins and that's how that sits for the next layer this one looks like this again we're watching the square shoulder lining it up with the square shoulder there so when we set it down this is straight and the three pins are connecting and we're ready for our next layer of gasket material for the next layer we're watching this design and how this comes off to the side so this gasket has an angle there it also has this tab which when we set this together uh, and they fall on the pins the tab comes out towards the pulse line port and then we've got our another layer of filament here and that will match where this little tab goes towards that tab and it will fall over top like that and then the last layer looks like this and we've got the square shoulder here lining up with the square shoulder there falls on sits right on the pins and then we've got ourselves uh, the screen for the gas little makeshift gas filter they got there and then we've got a fresh gasket here that pops in like that now we're ready to put this on I'm gonna orientate it so that it lands over here that way my impulse line is coming over here on the right side of the carburetor right side of the machine and then this fuel line will be coming over on the right side as well I'm doing that because there are belts and a belt and two clutches on the other side now, I do not want to be uh, running any gas lines near those that would be quite a problem so I'll screw this down fairly snug just enough to let that rubber uh, seat in and create a fuel seal like I said I'm not over tightening it but that's like that now we're ready to put the rest of these screws in just going to go ahead and put these screws in here. They all just sit down in. And then I'll tighten them in a star pattern so that I don't get some sort of, you know, uneven pressure. What I mean is I'll tighten this one. And then after I get some tension on that, I'll come over here and I'll tighten this one. And then I'll come back over here, tighten this one. Then I'll go over here, tighten this one. And then I'll come over here, tighten this one, and then I'll go over here, tighten this one some more, and then I'll come over here, tighten this one. Uh, you get the idea. Now that we got these tightened up, we need to go ahead and put our low speed and high speed jets in. All right, there's four parts to what we're installing here. We got ourselves a O-ring, we've got a washer, got the spring, and the jet. According to Tillotson, you run this in until it seats, and then we're going to bring it out half a turn and a whole turn. One whole turn back out is the starting point of tuning that before we put it on the machine. Then we'll run the motor and kind of decide where home is for that. The high speed screw has four parts too. We got the O ring, the washer, the spring, the needle that goes in, and run that in until it seats and then I'll back that one out an inch uh, sorry I'll back that one out one whole turn as well so you just go until you feel that resistance you can feel when it seats then you bring it back half turn whole turn right there is where it's ready to uh, test and tune in the motor and see how things are running so I'm gonna run a pop-off pressure test here uh, one thing to keep in mind is this is the return line that goes back to the gas tank so that the system doesn't have vapor lock. In order to do this pop-off pressure test, you have to plug that or it will just let uh, air pressure bleed through. But when that's plugged, because gas would be in that system plugging it, we're watching and we want it to be right around 10. You can see it was about 11. Uh, maybe it's 12. Yeah, seems like it's popping at around 11 or 12. Now this system's dry, so I'm gonna say that's pretty good because usually when you put a little moisture in there, 
uh, get the oil and the gas in there, the pop-off pressure will be a little lower. So I think we're going to be okay. I'm going to call this one good. Now it's time to put the throttle cable holder on. I want to point out that the throttle cable comes right here and you want a line that pulls straight forward. So just if you're orientating this and you got it down here, it's going to be pulling down. If you get it up there, obviously it doesn't get close. So you got to flip it so that three bolt holes set it up so that the cable pulls straight through right into uh, a nice path there and gives the least resistance on that cable as it pulls the throttle open. And we'll set the velocity stack on here. There is no wrong orientation for that. And the way these work is you got these tabs and they sit under there. And sorry, it's kind of difficult to see, but they're under there like that. And they hold it all together. And I'm going to tighten those up with a 7 16 inch socket. All right, and then we get the last of them all tightened up. We can say that this carb is cleaned, rebuilt, all new parts, new diaphragm, everything, and the pop-off pressure is really close to being within spec. And I'm looking forward to bolting this on the motor. Moving on to the next step of getting that engine ready to run. Well, thanks for watching this and going through the project with me. Again, I'm Fix It for Josh's sake, and I enjoy working on things and helping other people uh, in their process of fixing and working on things too. So if you enjoyed it, go ahead and uh, give me a thumbs up and like and comment and share and follow and subscribe and all that. Uh, have a good time working on your stuff as we fix it for Josh's sake.